Hi, I'm Bryant with Miami Beach Regional Library, and I'm here to tell you a very, very special story that originally came from Japan. Now, this is an adaptation that I've created just for you, but always remember that the original stories from each of these countries are the best, and that's what you want to go with if you get more interested in this. So this is the story of Isimboshi, who's sometimes called the One Inch Samurai. Once upon a time in Japan, there was a samurai and his wife, and they were very honest and good people. They protected the locals in their care from bandits and robbers and other troublemakers, and they did not take more taxes than was, than were just, and they never did anything dishonest or hurtful to the people they were responsible for. On the contrary, they were always there to help. But despite all of this, there was one sad point in their lives. They wanted a child. And with the passage of years, they did not have one. But no matter what, they went to the shrine and they asked for a child and they made offerings. And one day the samurai's wife said, if I could only have a child, I would love that child, even if they were only one inch tall. Well, nine months later, a child was born to the samurai's wife, and the parents rejoiced, even though the child never got any bigger than one inch tall. And they named this child Isimboshi. And Isimboshi they raised to be a samurai. They taught him all of the samurai's accomplishments and virtues, how to be brave, how to use a sword, how to use a bow, how to show manners and respect at court, how to treat people who have a lower rank in society with respect, and how to take care of all kinds of problems and be just and honest and upright. And Isimboshi had a great voice that one would think came from a giant, and he could be heard very far away when he was laughing or talking. But no one was ever disturbed because he was such a kind and well-mannered young man. Well, he became a man, and it was time for him to seek his fortune in the world because there's only so much work for samurai in any small village. And the daimyo, the lord, did not have enough work for another samurai, so Isimboshi was given a special sword, the finest steel, but it's not ordinary. It was made with his mother's sewing needle, and you can see the eye right there. And he was given other equipment, like a boat made of a rice bowl, and they took the finest chopstick from their utensils and made it into an oar, and he was given some provisions. And he went to the capital to find a lord who needed another samurai to serve him. And he went down the river, as he was going down the river, he remembered the warnings about the monsters that live in the countryside to watch out for. And when he moored his boat at night, he saw the first of these monsters, the frog monsters. Now the frog monsters look a lot like frogs, except they are very intelligent and not kind, and they like to eat little travelers. And they saw that Isimboshi was going to be the perfect meal, and they said, Ribbit! Ribbit! We're going to eat this little man! And they didn't realize that he wasn't asleep. So Isimboshi got a little cucumber out of his pack because he knew he couldn't run away. And he held it out like his hand and said, Pleased to meet you! Here, take my hand! And he held it over the side of the boat. And wouldn't you know it, one of the frog monsters grabbed it and said, Ha! ha I've got you! I've got you! And they started fighting over the little cucumber, thinking it was Isimboshi's tiny body. Ribbit! 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 And Isimboshi did not try to fight them with his sword or take advantage in that way. Instead, he made good his escape with his little oar. And he found a safer place to sleep the night. Well, the next night, there were crow monsters flying overhead. And they saw Isimboshi, and he could hear them boasting. First, we'll pick him 
up and drop him from far in the sky. Well, this Boshi knew that, especially since parachutes hadn't been invented yet, there was no way he was going to survive such a fall that the crow monster would give him. So he had to play another trick. He took a piece of reed from the riverbank, knowing from his mother's teaching that crow monsters were curious. And he took the reed, and it's hollow like this, and it looks like a telescope to people. And he pointed at the moon, and he said, Ah, I can use this magic looking glass to see the people living on the moon. Well, of course, crow monsters are curious, so they said, Ah, I want to see the people on the moon. No, me. So Isimboshi said, Here, share it among yourselves. And he tossed the looking glass into the air. And the crow monsters started flapping around. Go! started fighting each other. <laughs> and the hullabaloo was so great that they lost track of Isimboshi, who pushed his boat away from the riverbank and paddled down the stream with his chopstick. Well, the next morning, a little bit tired, he arrived in the capital. And he started looking around for a lord to serve and going to the different townhouses. But in many cases, the lords were here or there and weren't available. But there was a bigger danger. He almost got killed many times by people just walking in the street and by carts rolling on by. People would walk and they had big feet and almost stomped him. He grew up in a village, so he didn't learn what you learned in school, which is to look both ways when you cross the street. He had to find out the hard way. Thankfully, Isimboshi survived. His robes may be a little muddy, the fine robes that he'd been given. And he eventually arrived at the courtyard of the emperor's first minister, or chief minister. And he walked into the courtyard right past the guards because he learned that asking for an introduction, though polite, wouldn't work because no one would even give him an audience because of his small size. They did not treat him right. And so he went into the courtyard and he called out in his big booming voice, First Minister, I am here to seek service as one of your samurai. And the First Minister heard this loud voice, and of course all visitors to him were always announced, so he didn't know what to make of this. He went out on his balcony and said, Who said that? How did you get past my guards? And so little Isimboshi called out again, First Minister, they could not see me because of my size. Look down, my lord. And the first minister looked down, and sure enough, he saw this tiny little man with a tiny little sword. And it is a little mean what he did, but he started laughing. <laughs> you can't be serious. You, one of my samurai? My lord, I have been well trained, and I have all the courtesies of a samurai and all the martial skill. Well, if anything, you have a big voice. I will make you my herald, since my other one just retired. And I will also make you one of the guards to my daughter, and you can amuse her. Listen, Boshi didn't like having to amuse a fine lady when he wanted to go out with the other samurai and patrol. But he did know that he had a big voice. And he would make a good herald, for a herald is one who makes announcements and delivers messages. Lissimboshi soon discovered that he rather liked being a guard to the chief minister's daughter, for she was a beautiful lady, but her beauty was the least of her qualities. She was intelligent, and she was well-educated, much better educated than Lissimboshi, much better educated than most of the emperor's ministers. She could read and write in Japanese and Chinese. She was so accomplished, and yet... Isimboshi had a problem, and the chief minister's daughter had a problem. They started to fall in love with each other. They started to see the bravery and the good qualities that so matched in each other. But there was a big issue. Isimboshi was not from a great samurai family, though. He had a long line of distinguished samurai ancestors. They had never been great landholders. And what is more, he was tiny, and that was regarded as not being good enough for the chief minister's daughter. So they kept their love secret, even from each other. They would not come out and say how they felt. And so it seemed it would be for years. 
But very soon, something began to change. Something changed the very, very next day from when they realized how they felt. Because there was a festival and all the noble ladies had to go to the shrine to make offerings. And Isimboshi was part of the retinue of samurai guarding the noble ladies through the streets. And as they got near the shrine, something unexpected happened. You see, Isimboshi's mother had taught him much lore and much wisdom, and one of the things that she had taught him was about the Oni. Now the Oni are horrible, giant creatures, kind of like an ogre, and they have red or blue skin, and they have horns. And let me tell you, they like to eat people. At least this Oni did. And so the Oni came out of the bushes, almost by magic, and he stared at the ladies, and he stared at the samurai, and he said, Ha ha ha! I see some fine, delicate morsels here, referring to the ladies. And I don't see anyone guarding them, and he looked at the samurai. They started to lose their courage. Some of them dropped their swords in fright. Others even ran away. Except for one of them, little Isimboshi, who was great of heart and still greater of voice. And he said, Violoni, if you touch one hair on my lady's head, I will be the end of you. And the Oni said, Ha 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 ha! Who are you to try to stop me, little man? I can eat you in one bite. And Isimboshi said, Well, go ahead and try, and he ran forward. And sure enough, the Oni tried to grab him and pick him up, but Isimboshi was too fast, and he crawled up the Oni's like, Ah! And he crawled up his chest, Ah! And he got a purchase near his eyes, and he started stabbing near the outside of the eyeball. He wasn't trying to blind it because Isimboshi was even to a monster a man of mercy, but he was getting him to be in pain. And then he went to his ears, and he started sticking the little needle sword in his ears, and he went to his nose, and he started sticking the little needle sword in his nose, and finally the Oni had enough. I'm going to eat you! He kept trying to grab Isimboshi, who kept dodging, but finally he got him in his mouth, and he swallowed him. And that was the Oni's biggest mistake, because now he thought Isimboshi was gone, and he started laughing. Ha 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 ha! Now I'm going to eat you! And inside, Isimboshi, great of voice, could be heard saying, If you don't spit me out and run away, I'm going to be the end of you! And he kept stabbing him. Ah! Ah! Like that. And finally, the Oni, he cried out, Okay! Okay! I give up! And he spit Isimboshi out. Ah! And the little samurai was covered in all kinds of unspeakable saliva and other things. But he landed on the ground unharmed, and the Oni ran away. And he dropped something very special on the ground, for Oni tended to carry a magic hammer. Now, I mentioned that the first minister's daughter was very educated and knowledgeable, and so she went over to the hammer and knew what to do. She touched the hammer, and she made a secret wish. And suddenly a Simboshi began to grow and grow and grow and grow until he was the tallest samurai there. And now, having saved all the noble ladies and saved the cowardly samurai, he was given a rank in the imperial court, and the chief minister's, chief minister's daughter was allowed to marry him. And they lived happily ever after, and Isimboshi invited his parents to move with him to the capital, and so they had one large family. I hope you enjoy this story of Isimboshi, and if you're interested in more things like this, you can follow us on social media, and you can always visit us at www.mdpls.org. Have a wonderful day.